been a really long and hard road to be the number one yurt dwelling <laughs> ultra runner in Missoula. I'm pretty sure there's about a handful of other, you know, hermit yurt dwellers who live in the in town here and I don't really know them that well. I don't think any of them are into ultra running, but uh you know, I it's a it's a title I wear proudly. <laughs> Like a beat was in my headlights crawling Dragging a crippled little paw I felt something of the good inside me then Now I don't feel it all Something of the good inside him then Now he doesn't feel at all He felt something of the good inside him then Now Why he so doesn't feel at all stop saying some mean Things about me Grew up in Ohio and I didn't run much at all. Uh, I was a chubby little baseball player. I loved baseball. I was on like three teams in the summer. Just killed it. I was an outfielder. <laughs> um, when I went to college in Ohio and uh, just started running to get in shape and you know just a little release from classes and then I moved out to Montana here in Missoula eight years ago and uh, you know, the open spaces and the trails around kind of lent themselves to doing the same thing in between classes at school, but just got into it more and more. And then a few years ago, I started signing up for races and ultra marathons and things of that nature, and it perpetuated from there. So, oh, pictures on the window, the American flag, the girl open shirt. I run up to 20, 22 hours a week throughout the summer equals out to 130, 140 mile weeks usually um, with a fair amount of vert. I mean, two and a half hours a day, long runs on the weekends, that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of times it averages out to nine or 10 minute miles. I mean, you know, you get that fast leg turnover if you're hammering a downhill and you'll be at five minute pace and <laughs> you'll be power hiking an uphill at 20 minute pace. I mean, that's what's so cool about it. I mean, it's super dynamic. The last five years, every single winter I've skied over 120 days a winter. I mean, I'm skiing a lot and trying to backcountry ski two or three days a week. And, uh, you know, historically I've ski patrolled, so I try to run in the morning, patrol, which is a pretty physical job, and then run at night, so it'd be pretty exhausting. Um, this is the first year where I've actually run a lot through the winter, so, you know, we're heading into spring right now and we'll see how it goes. But uh, backcountry skiing is great because you end up in really steep, dramatic alpine terrain and uh, there's no way that won't benefit your, your strength in your legs, but also just mentally. It's it's such a great way to get exercise in in the winter and be out uh, high in the mountains and enjoying yourself. So yeah, I try and use it whenever possible. So I was the top American overall in 11th. I think there was something like 23 or 2400 runners there. Uh, I mean, it was surreal mainly because I've never even experienced what it's like to race uh, in an event like that in Europe and just the, the culture that surrounds it and the folks that are, uh, you know, screaming in your ear in the middle of a mountain pass in the middle of the night with a cowbell in one hand and a bottle of alcohol in the other <laughs> and um, just their excitement for the sport is pretty amazing and uh, I had a great race I mean I I wasn't sure how the race would wash out and I wanted to, to feel good in the second half when a course has 33,000 feet of elevation gain or it's somewhere near there and I didn't go into the the race with much course knowledge or anything like that I just knew it would be steep and I think that played to my advantage since they changed the course in the middle of the race due to a mudslide. 
Uh, they had to reroute the course and things like that. So I wasn't caught as, on my heels as much as maybe some other folks. Um, due to my ignorance, ignorance is bliss, I guess, in this case. Uh, and I just kind of kept my head down and kept moving forward. And I didn't realize I was the first American until I crossed the finish line. Uh, my good friend who was crewing me uh, told me, and I was actually pretty surprised. <laughs> I'm going back this year and pretty excited and actually will hopefully have a little bit more of a plan going into it as far as, um, you know, what I'd like to do. Yeah, I live in a yurt just uh, kind of six, seven miles north of town, north of Missoula. Uh, I've always been intrigued by kind of small spaces. I don't really need a lot of space and kind of simple lifestyles. And being into backcountry skiing, I've spent a lot of time in yurts. So I've always had an interest in them. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I'm ready to be a homeowner. <laughs> and uh, uh, this seemed like a good option at the time. And... I'm loving it, you know, I've placed it in, uh, you know, right on the border of an amazing wilderness area and recreation area with hundreds of miles of trails out my front door. Uh, so I, I think it's actually lent to a really high quality of life. I feel like I used to be really into running apologetically. Um, I, would, I would sacrifice things to go for a run because it was really important to me, but I felt weird and bad about it, like socially and things like that, because I would, I mean, sometimes friends wouldn't understand or I'd sacrifice something that wouldn't make sense to people to get out in the hills and go for a run. And uh, I'd like to continue it as a practice and a discipline because I think it's really given me some balance in life. Essentially some of the best friendships I've made and some of the most amazing experiences that I've had have come through running and uh, I'd like to continue that as long as I can. Uh, it might look different in the future, but it, I don't want it to go away um, anytime soon. Whoa.